In this lesson, you learn how to render a rounded, flat, and dome ring, and how to apply different surface treatments. A great technique that you can also apply when rendering bracelets, links, chains, and rigid necklaces. To make our first ring, we select the ellipse tool, move over to our next empty artboard, and click once with the mouse. In the ellipse window, we set the height and the width to 1.7 cm, which will be the inside diameter of our ring, and click OK. To create the thickness of our ring, we go to the Object menu, scroll down to Path, and select Offset Path. In the window that appears, we type in 0.25 cm. The rest of the settings we leave as they are, and then we click OK. Now it's time to do the top view of the ring. To make sure that we place it exactly lined up with the front view, we use the rulers. Grabbing and dragging them with the selection tool, and dropping one on each side of the ring. As a reminder, you can make the rulers disappear or appear by going up to the View menu, scroll down to Rulers, and select Hide Rulers or Show Rulers. To draw the top of the ring, we'll use the rounded rectangle tool, clicking with the mouse and dragging it to the other side. In the Transform section, we'll set our height to exactly 0.4 cm. This section is where you can give precise settings to your selected shapes. Before we render, we're going to copy the shapes that we just made and use them as a base for our second ring. This second ring will be wide and flat. To make the edges straight, we click on one of the little blue circles inside the rectangle and drag it towards the corner. Then we select all shapes in the ring and copy and drag it to the right. This third ring will be a dome ring, so we delete the top, move the outside circle in the front view up a little bit, and then elongate it by dragging the bounding box with the mouse. With the direct selection tool, we add a little more volume to the sides at the bottom by pulling the anchor point handles. To make the top view, we select the ellipse tool, clicking on the left ruler, and drag the shape to the other side. We don't need the rulers anymore, so we select them with the selection tool and hit delete. To align the rings horizontally, we take the horizontal ruler and place it underneath. The center ring is a little bit too high, so we're going to move it down. Then we select the three rings, align them all at the center of the page, and delete the ruler. Now we're going to scale them up, so we go to the Object menu, Transform, and click on Scale. It's already set to 200%, so we click OK. Then we ungroup the rings. The corners of our first ring have become a bit square, so we'll adjust them by pulling the blue circle towards the inside. And now we're ready to render! With the top of our first ring selected, we go over to the swatches and select the shiny gold ball. Then we pick the gradient tool and adjust the width by pulling the handle and the height by dragging the black dot down. Before we render the front view of the ring, we need to create a shape between the two circles. So we select them, right click with the mouse and select Make Compound Path. Then we select the new shape Head over to Swatches and select the same color. Now we'll adjust the color with the Gradient tool by dragging the swatches on the handle. And 
and to see clearly, we zoom in a lot. To give the effect of a soft, high shine surface, we're going to leave a reflective light on the inside and on the outside. Now we select the top view of the dome ring and apply the round, shiny pink gold color. And adjust the height and the width of the gradient with the gradient tool. Then we select the circles in the front view. Right click with our mouse and select Make Compound Path. Now we apply the same color as we did for the top view and modify the gradient with the gradient tool. For our third ring, we'll select the white gold tube color swatch. It already looks good, so we don't need to tweak it. Then we select the two circles in the front view, right click with our mouse and select Make Compound Path. As a color, we'll select the flat white gold swatch. We'll first rotate the gradient to 90 degrees in the gradient area. And then we do some finishing tweaks with the gradient tool. This ring will have a brushed surface, so we make a copy that will be our outline later. Then we select both views, go up to Effect, scroll down to Texture and select Grain. The intensity is 9, the contrast 5, and it already looks good, so we click OK. Then we remove the filling from the copy. Move the outlines on top of our brushed ring. And group the top and the front views. To make our rings pop nicely, we'll add a shadow and a highlight, just like we learned before. Now we make the highlight and shadow for our front view. And we use the eyedropper tool to copy the colors from the top view. To make the shapes fit inside the ring, we need to ungroup them by pressing the command, shift and G keys if you're using Mac or Control, Shift and the G key if you're using Windows. This way we can move them separately.
Then we repeat the process to make the shadows in our dome and flat rings. As so a last step, we'll add a drop shadow. So we go up to Effect, scroll down to Stylize, and select Drop Shadow. And voila, our rings are ready and popping. One of the really great perks with Illustrator is how fast we can duplicate and modify renderings and shapes. Let's see how easily we can apply a hammered surface to our dome ring in less than a minute and a half. First we select and ungroup it. Then we remove the highlight, brown shadow and outline. Now we head up to Effect, scroll down to Pixelate and select Crystallize. Then we drag the cell size up and click OK. And our ring is beautifully hammered. And we're all set.